hello everyone uh, today we will see a scattered wave amplitude uh, it actually refer you we have already seen that when Bragg condition is satisfied uh, there will be uh, constructive interference will be taking place uh, between uh, the waves uh, which are x-ray waves which are reflected from uh, successive planes in the crystal and in a particular direction uh, conforming to the Bragg condition whether Bragg condition is satisfied or not we will be getting uh, cons due to constructive interference we will be getting a sharp peaks in the XRD uh, uh, data uh, so but uh, we uh, that actually doesn't uh, give uh, any idea about uh, why uh, certain uh, peaks are um, having high intensity whereas some of them are having low intensity so in order to understand it uh, deeply we will have to analyze uh, the scattered wave amplitude propagating in a particular direction uh, with respect to the electron distribution in the lattice whereas in the case of Bragg's, Bragg's law uh, the reflection from successive planes will be considered whereas the atomic distribution will not be incorporated and uh, the peaks, the, the the occurrence of the peaks is related to uh, the satisfaction of the Bragg condition which is uh, like path difference from successive planes, adjacent plane should be equal to integral multiple of lambda. So that doesn't incorporate uh, how the electron distribution or the atomic distribution in the lattice and uh, the associated electron distribution of each of the basis uh, group of atoms how is it going to contribute to the scattered intensity that is not uh, we cannot have an idea about uh, th this factor from Bragg's law Bragg's law just uh, Bragg's law actually gives you what are the theta values at, at which we can uh, observe peaks whereas why some of the peaks are high and some of the peaks are low that is not uh, that is not given by Bragg's law so in order to understand that we will uh, look at this topic which is scattered wave amplitude for that we have to uh, analyze how the electron distribution in the lattice affects the scattered x-ray amplitude in a particular direction so when we uh, discuss this topic we will see different terms like atomic scattering factor crystal structure factor form factor etc and in the end we will also uh, discuss the physical significance of uh, these terms particularly the structure factor so for the, that we review Bragg's law uh, n lambda is equal to 2 d sine theta uh, this is the this is referred to as a Bragg condition it tells you what are the theta values theta if you remember the uh, how we derived the Bragg equation theta is the angle uh, that the incident x-ray beam is making with respect to the lattice uh, plane uh, it is actually the grazing angle uh, so and d is the interplanar spacing so for uh, a plane which is identified by a set of edge scale value it will be having a unique value of d and for that d there should be a certain angle theta at which uh, with which the incident x-ray beam should uh, hit the uh, sample with respect to that particular plane uh, so that it will be uh, giving rise to uh, constructive interference and it will result in a high peak or a, a high peak uh, not not high peak a peak in the spectrum which is the result of con constructive interference of waves which are reflected from successive planes so this is what we call the Bragg condition uh, so uh, for example this is how a uh, typical XRD data looks like you can see along the x-axis these are the Bragg angle and uh, corresponding to certain values of theta we, we are getting we can see these peaks so this theta uh, for example this uh, uh, re this is actually the constructive interference which is taking place from uh, successive planes which are having the lowest uh, uh, group of Miller indices okay for that particular crystal system so each of these peaks can be tagged to the corresponding Miller indices you can see this for example here you can see this 2 to 0 these are the edge scale values or this corresponds to the Bragg reflection from the 2 to 0 plane okay and you can see the different planes so each of these uh, planes will be having a unique value of D therefore there should be a unique value of theta at which this Bragg condition will be satisfied and we are getting these peaks 
okay uh, but uh, we do not know why some of the peaks are uh, big and some of the peaks are low so in that is uh, the importance of this particular topic which we call the scattered in wave amplitude so why uh, this is uh, this uh, peak actually corresponds to the scattered wave amplitude in that particular direction which is governed by theta uh, so why some of these uh, peaks are high or low it actually depends on the scattered wave amplitude coming from various planes some of them are high and some of them are low so uh, for for that we will uh, see uh, we will go into the depth of this topic and uh, we will uh, analyze uh, this Bragg uh, reflection or Bragg uh, diffraction uh, in a little bit more detail so we have to in order to do that we have to review how we ha whatever we have learned earlier uh, one of these is translation vector that we are using in uh, in explaining the symmetry of the crystal uh, for example uh, if you have got a lattice like this uh, well let us see see uh, this a1 and a2 let us take this to be the uh, crystal vectors uh, these are actually the primitive translation vectors a1 and a2 we also call them to be the crystal vectors so the the set of crystal vectors uh, are unique for uh, the type of the crystal that is concerned so uh, the translation vector uh, for example uh, this is how for example suppose you have got a position uh, like this which is defined by the position coordinate r then if you make integral number number of steps along the a1 direction and a2 direction then you will be reaching another point and uh, the so that uh, the, that movement is actually represented by the translation vector okay and this crystal will be having a translation symmetry which means you start from here uh, which is uh, defined by this vector r then you make integral number number of steps which is given by this u1 a1 u2 a2 and u3 a3 here uh, i have taken only a two dimensional lattice but u3 a3 corresponds to the three dimensional lattice u1 u2 and u3 are integers and a1 a2 a3 are the crystal vectors okay here i have shown the crystal vectors in two dimension in the in in three dimensional crystal there is that a3 also which is uh, appearing these are the primitive translation vectors which we have already discussed in the class uh, so what is happening is that if uh, that kind of a movement is taken or translation is done uh, starting from a particular uh, point which is given by R then you reach some other point which is also a lattice point uh, but uh, when you look uh, you know the surroundings of the initial point and final point will be the same or the crystal will be invariant under this translation so a crystal is having translational symmetry and that translational symmetry is represented by this equation uh, which means for any set of uh, uh, u1 u2 and u3 uh, the crystal the translation vector should be in such a way that it should leave the system invariant Uh, so a crystal is uh, therefore we say uh, you we define the translation vector like this u1 a1 plus u2 a2 plus u3 a3 uh, this is uh, where uh, as i explained earlier u1 u2 u3 are integers a1 a2 a3 are the crystal uh, vectors uh, so a crystal is invariant under a translation given by this equation now that means why this is so is because crystal has got uh, spatial periodicity uh, or uh, when you make integral number of uh, steps from one lattice point you are reaching another lattice point because of the periodicity which is present inside the crystal so uh, that means uh, the lattice points are arranged uh, in a spatially periodic manner but these lattice points will be occupied by al atoms or group of atoms each of these group of atoms will be having a finite number of electrons with them depending on what type of atoms uh, make up the crystal okay so that means if it is if the crystal is having a translational symmetry then it will also be having a, a periodic distribution of electron number density so that also we take into account in order to deeply uh, in order to go into the depth of how scattered in density is affected by the electron distribution which is present inside the crystal so we define the electron number density n of r again uh, to be a periodic function because of this uh, spatial periodicity which is already present inside the crystal lattice so that is the n of r let that be the electron number density and uh, depending on uh, the 
the, the lattice constants uh, of that particular system we can uh, say uh, for example uh, we can define the translational vector like this uh, which will uh, leave the system invariant so that o also mean that if n of r is having special periodicity then n of r plus t uh, will be this n of r should be equal to n of r plus t which means the same kind of uh, electron distribution can be seen at the position at the position defined by the position uh, vector r and also at the position defined by r plus t after making a translation governed by this equation uh, so why this is important is because because, uh, the, because of the presence of this uh, periodic uh, nature of the electron uh, distribution inside the crystal we will be able to make use of the Fourier analysis uh, because as you know Fourier series uh, any any periodic function can be represented by uh, the Fourier series so that is what we are going to do here uh, in the electron number distribution we take a one dimensional uh, case in the beginning so let us we can uh, take uh, electron distribution along x direction we can uh, express it as a Fourier series uh, n0 plus this uh, series uh, summation CP cos uh, cos function and sine function the periodicity is spatial so that means the argument of the cos and sine function will be like this uh, where you will be having this 2 pi x by 8 uh, x uh, tells you that the periodicity is spatial and this 2 pi by 8 term tells you that uh, the periodicity is a okay and this P is an integer so uh, when you, we got these co coefficients cp and sp uh, these are the Fourier coefficients and in this summation uh, p should be uh, a, num a positive number uh, so this is how we represent a standard uh, way of representing Fourier series uh, when the when the, uh, the the corresponding quantity has got a spatial uh, periodicity now um, uh, because uh, the periodicity is a this will also mean n of x plus a is the same as n of x so that we can easily see what you have to do is uh, this x should be replaced by x plus a okay and then uh, the argument of this cosine function it will be having uh, the 2 pi p x by a and 2 pi uh, p so the addition of uh, in p is an integer so addition of the integral number of 2 pi will not ma make any change in this cos or sine function so obviously what we will be getting at the end is n of x plus a is equal to n of x so that uh, shows that uh, this uh, the, the way in which we have taken this uh, function it is uh, it is uh, satisfying the condition that the periodicity should be equal to a now in this expansion in this is a Fourier expansion of this electron number uh, density in which is present in, uh, in that particular crystal system and this 2 pi p by a that is said to be a point in the reciprocal space you know that when when this 1 by a, a is the lattice constant and when we have got something like 2 pi by a that correspond to the reciprocal lattice uh, vector uh, so this 2 pi p by a uh, if you uh, that is uh, 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 called that is said to be a point in the uh, reciprocal space we have got uh, different uh, values of p is allowed here so corresponding to different values of p will be having integral multiple of uh, 2 pi uh, by a for example 2 pi by a 2 2 pi by a 3 2 pi by a like that there will be different points and corresponding to each of the value of p will be having a point and that point is referred to as a point in the Fourier space or in the reciprocal lattice of the uh, crystal since this is considered only along x direction uh, that reciprocal lattice can be considered to be a one dimensional reciprocal lattice so that is uh, what is shown here uh, this uh, you have got some kind of a periodicity which is appear uh, which is present in say in the crystal you have got this uh, like for example along x y axis let us say n of x is considered and this is x so some uh, spatially periodic uh, uh, some system is repeating you can see the periodicity is a for example in this case so corresponding to that we'll be having uh, so this is the way in which we uh, represent the spatial periodicity in the real space so if uh, so that means the periodicity in real space is a we call it the uh, ordinary space lattice 
okay uh, that means if you just put points corresponding to this you will be getting a set of points and that is referred to as a space lattice of periodicity a and corresponding to that we can think about a reciprocal lattice in which you will be having a set of points like integral multiple of 2 pi by a okay 2 0 2 pi by a 2 2 pi by a 3 2 pi by a like, like that along positive and negative direction so that that will give you a set of points again and that uh, is referred to as the reciprocal lattice in one dimension so we use the symbol g to represent that reciprocal lattice vector and uh, um, uh, or you can also say that this 2 pi p by a where p is an integer that can be uh, considered to be an allowed uh, term in the Fourier space okay allowed point in the Fourier space uh, it is allowed uh, or not uh, depending on whether it is uh, whether it satisfies the condition uh, that we used uh, or whether it is conforming to the way in which we have represented the uh, Fourier expansion of uh, that n of x so the number density uh, n of x can also be written in the complex exponential form like this summation over p and p exponential e, e exponential i 2 by p x by the amplitude the argument factor uh, remains the same except for the presence of this i because you know that cos e raised to i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta but uh, uh, there are certain conditions that uh, these con coefficients should be satis uh, should satisfy the summation is done over p but this p can be positive negative or zero and this n of p they, this can be a complex number or a uh, or it can be an ordinary number or it can also be a complex number but uh, the since this is electron number distribution it should be a real quantity so in order to satisfy that the condition that we uh, need is if it is uh, uh, just a number uh, if it is an ordinary number then the condition that is to be satisfied by NP should be in such a way that N of minus P should be equal to NP whereas if it is a complex uh, quantity uh, then uh, the complex conjugate of n of negative should p should be equal to n p and that we can is e we can actually verify when uh, for example what we have to do is you find out uh, the a pair of term terms corresponding to plus p and minus p and you add them together and you will get these coefficients and uh, when you do that you will see that uh, only when n of minus p is equal to n of p the imaginary term will be uh, vanishing so that it will uh, satisfy the condition that n of x will be a, should be a real quantity now in three dimensional crystal we can uh, this is the way in which we represented the number density in one di uh, one dimension so we we can extend that to three dimension like this we have got this 2 pi p by a uh, it is uh, actually the reciprocal lattice vector which we represent as uh, g then e raised to i uh, e raised to i of this term can be represented as uh, e raised to i g g dot r instead of x we will write r and this 2 pi p by a is uh, the reciprocal lattice vector g so in three dimension this can be represented like a summation over g n g exponential i g dot r so this is the way in which we are going to represent the electron number density which is periodic in three dimension uh, and uh, capital g represents the reciprocal lattice vector and this reciprocal lattice vector g should be so chosen that corresponding to a translation vector which is given by u1 a1 plus u2 a2 plus u3 a3 g should be so uh, chosen uh, that uh, this uh, na this equation uh, the, uh, which is uh, given by th this equation which is used for representing the electron distribution uh, it should be uh, invariant under a translation uh, given by t uh, 